Welcome back to episode 17 of the Guardian Project Podcast. One seven. I am your host, Andy Flory, and if Golos Tireless Pilgrim was a character for Mean Girls, he would be Gretchen Wieners, because I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm so popular. Wow. It's and true. I'm your host, Brian Leithhead, and if I were an art project that was inspired by Eldrain, I'd be all that glitters. That card's really good. I love that card so much. <laughs> Please listen carefully. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic, Magic Gathering. Gathering. MTG. Yeah, what, you know me. What's on the agenda? I don't know. Let me read my notes. Okay, so we're going to... We <laughs> we had a... Uh, we're trying to look for a new logo. We're going to talk about that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, we got a Howie Mandel update. How's Howie? Howie... Okay. He's not hungry, so that's good. Uh, we also want, we're going to talk about our win every card event. That happened this past weekend. Really the past week, but past weekend we're going to talk about. Um, then we're going to talk about the boogeyman of the standard format. Ooh, with Halloween right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And then we're also going to talk about the throne of Aldrain distribution shortage. Boo. <laughs> you, you got two boos in. I know. <laughs> we're prepping for Halloween here, okay? Yeah. It's coming up in a couple weeks. I got a couple parties to go to. I'm a popular dude, so. And tell everybody what you're going as. It's, or do you, is it a secret? Some people that are going to the party listen to this. Yeah. So, so I'm going to. Our, wait, we're, yeah. So it's a, the, tell them the theme of the parties. So we're going to channel nine five five in local Metro Detroit, you know, po very popular radio station, um, Halloween party. And this year's theme is eighties. However, we're also going to a very popular Halloween party the following weekend, which theme is Disney villains. Mm hmm. So uh, to cover both weekends, I'm going to go as an 80s Disney villain, and I'm going to go as Ursula from The Little Mermaid. I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> What's Angela going as? The Little Mermaid. Oh, the, she's going as the, the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid. The Ariel. <laughs> the Ariel. Um, she's like, if I can put one effort into it, because let me mention that- this One single effort. One single effort. <laughs> she's like, let me put all my effort into your costume, because- uh, first place, uh, they're, they're having a costume contest at this um, party. The channel 95.5. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, f f you know, $5,000. So she's like, if we're going to put all of our effort, let's put all of our e effort into Ursula. I'm like, I am with it. Yeah. $5,000. What are you going to renovate your house doing with, with that? What would you redo in your house with $5,000? <laughs> uh, everything. Cause <laughs> our house is old but you know yeah we're at that point too we're, we're going room by room at this point yeah i'd probably start with our kitchen because our i'd get the high resolution um granite countertops oh high res yeah not, yeah, not the pixelated no, no 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 yeah <laughs> not the it stopped downloading halfway through i asked for my birthday which is coming up next month i, I asked if we could redo our living room so that's that's what i i think we're gonna do okay, that's what you I'll want see. when you turn 30 to redo a room for your birthday <laughs> yeah but you're only 29 baby right now i'm only 29 i'll be the big 3-0 oh. i turn 30 welcome to the wrong side of back pain <laughs> speaking of back pain i fell off my bike and broke it today you broke your back i no my back's good my bike's not Ugh. i broke the handle or the the actual brake the left the left brake i broke it off my bike and the worst part you can't pump the brakes in that situation <laughs> cannot, i attempted to and then i wiped out the worst part was i wiped out in front of this old lady i mean she was a little ways out but she could clearly see me and i wiped out oh i scraped up i scraped up real bad and she didn't even ask me if i was okay she just walked past me what <laughs> a I, not nice old lady <laughs> there i was a literally, sweet old lady literally laying in the dirt in the woods i'm bleeding <laughs> out it was right somebody help me it was right off the cement i didn't even get on the trails which i've ridden hundreds of times i hit um i hit like a a root from a tree funny and my wheel my wheel went off and um you hit a groot i i hit a groot and I wiped out, <laughs> I broke my phone holder off the bike, which holds oh. my phone. My phone went flying. There I am like, don't cry. You're okay. You're <laughs> not going to, you're not going to do it. And I stood up and I was like, oh, there's the pain. 
Yep. And then the lady just passed me. She didn't even ask Aww, if I was that's horrible. Okay. So I walked my bike home. It was like a good mile <laughs> from home. Oh, no. <laughs> did, you, did somebody put a bandaid? Did Nick put a bandaid on you? No, I'm, I was like, it, it was just scraped. It feel, Honestly, it was like getting rug burn, but it was rubber from my handle, oh. the handlebar. So nothing actually really got, no, I didn't, I didn't really, it was, it was just mostly, um, I think I'm just going to get bruised. <laughs> yeah. So that was that stinks. Yeah. But you're here now, but I'm here now. Uh, I, for the people I pulled through, I took some aspirin and I am recording today. <laughs> um, that was a tangent that we went off of from what? What? Well, how do we get to that? We got there somehow. We got there. Two o. I know, but but you said something, and then and then we got here. Anyway, okay. let's just get to our first topic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I we're off to our I was gonna start. I was gonna come full circle, and we're gonna just, just like your bike ride. You're trying to go first full circle and full just circle. crashed. Yeah, yeah. So we're about half circle now, and we're just gonna move on. So, uh. We're getting a facelift, and we're going for a fresh new look. L- new, new, new logo. Who dis? New, new. Uh, we're working on getting a logo for the podcast. Um, we reached out to some... Uh, well, I reached out on Twitter to find uh, a graphic designer or an artist who can help us. Um, we're not 100% sure what we want yet, but eventually, you are going to see the name appear as the Guardian Project Podcast. Nope. Guardian Project Podcast. And then you're going to have a new logo, so... If you're if you're looking for the logo, it might look a little different in a few weeks. So don't be alarmed. We are we are looking. We're not going anywhere. Um, we're we're just, not hiding. No, just, uh, just, just getting a little Botox. New new look. Who dis? New look. Who dis? That should be our hashtag for that. That yeah, we'll yeah our post that week will will be yeah. hashtag new look. Who dis? Yeah. Um, but if you know anyone that's a graphic designer or an artist, actually both, because we would like some custom stuff made, uh, let us know. You can uh, either uh, tweet at us um, or you can send us an email, um, guardian, guardian Pod on Twitter or uh, guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. We have, it's been a while and we want to circle back to a segment that we had many episodes ago. Some of you may remember, some of you may be very confused about why we're talking about this, but we're going to circle back to How's Howie? How is Howie? How is Howie? How's Howie Mandel? What's he up to? He's not hungry. I can tell you he's that. He's not hungry. Howie's. <laughs> he's not hungry. What is he up to? Uh, he just wrapped up the se- the latest season, his 10th season as a judge for AGT. Gay, yeah, you know me. America's Got Talent's been on for 10 seasons. More than that. He was not an original judge for that. Really? Correct. Um, 10th season for that. He's doing good. Howie's great. He... Is apparently classified as a rude judge, which I don't ever see. I always see he's like the Randy he's the Jackson. He's nice one. He's the Randy Jackson of... Uh, props America's, to you. Props, prop, I got props for you, dog. Props for you. Yeah. Props to you. Um, he's for still, you? To you. Yeah, he's still bald. He's got that going, but, you know, whatever. It's his thing. It's, it's his look now. Do you remember, if you look at a picture of him in the 80s, drastically different he had like the huge curly hair locks now just bald so i'll just shave it i just i just looked up a, a picture of howie mandel does it scare you it i didn't know that he used to have curly hair but i also didn't know that he used to also just have a soul patch <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he had oh and there's a there's a picture with a full mustache oh he had long hair oh i did not like i don't like that no, I don't like the look of it. No, but I do like his look now. So if you were interested in Howie Mandel's current situation, well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> we're desperate for content. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is good content. Yeah. People want to know please how li- Howie is. Please listen to us, everyone, about our Howie Mandel updates. Yes, this is... This is good stuff. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Back and for to the people who tuned out. <laughs> that's the end of this week. The, oh. This is Howie Mandel update signing off. Signing off. 
I I would hum the America's Got Talent theme, but I don't know what it is because I haven't watched that show in ten years. No, mm. no, probably five years. If you were to watch it within the last ten years, I would have known. You, you would have known Howie's latest update. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, moving on. The win every card event. Did you play? I played. I did not. I, I didn't win in, every card. Spoiler: I did not win every card. Uh, I didn't either. I got two would by life because I was doing chores and or head bowling. Uh, and uh, it was a very short time frame to play this event. It was. They extended it through Monday. I think till like twelve p.m. or something like that. But uh, it was very short lived. So last week we talked. I said I was probably going to play either Simic Flash or Green Black Henge. I did not. Wow. I perpetuated a stereotype. The problem. And I played Golos. Mm. But I did go Which one? I played Bant Golos. And I did not I made the mistake of not having a sideboard and playing Fave Wishes. So I played the old version. I um Rookie mistake. I know. <laughs> I went I went five and two though. So I got five wins. I felt really good about that. Um High five. High five. It, I played against Golos three times. I beat okay. it once. The other two mm. that I did lose were to were to that. Um, did you lose to Bant both times? Um, unsure. I honestly, I'm unsure because they didn't A, B, really. C, D, all of the above. They didn't really play anything that made me think that it was anything other than pretty much the stock list that I was playing. Okay. Um. Uh, it was clearly the strongest deck at the time. And, um, I saw on Twitter, some, some very few people did go 12 Oh, so that was cool. Some people did win. Congrats to those people. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I played against a couple of mono black decks, uh, with IR black aggro is very popular. Mono black with Reasonably that stupid popular. cauldron cat and cauldron familiar cauldron familiar is that what it is the cat that comes in they lose a life you yeah, you lose life well, they gain a life yeah it's then, the cat and the cauldron right the yeah and then they can sack a food to bring the stupid cat back and yep. then they just do the the whole thing yep. um that that got me even with doing like three board wipes and gaining life off of hydrate crisis i just could not so i but i also think i misplayed that was not a deck that i had that much experience with so i kind of went in and said well let's hope this deck can pilot itself and for the most part you, you're okay if you can just continuously ramp you do the right thing and then when you grab golos you grab field of the dead and then you but um i'm sure i could have made a couple different plays to have had it come out a little better but sure um it was fun but i i all i saw online was a lot of people saying <laughs> i was knocked out after two games to golos or i was knocked out after three <laughs> games to golos i think it was just it was good at the time and we just have to adjust to figure out how you get around golos so yep um I agree. but i got the i got the um the golden egg um card sleeve so just playing the event you got the gold the, the the alternate sleeve so that was cool okay um that's how that went and you said you you got um o and two by chores yeah i got two owed by life i uh, i don't even want to talk about it yeah should i talk about it? okay i'll talk about it talk about your life Tell us how Talk about our non magic and our all things of magic the gathering podcast. Yeah. Okay. Well we You hit, went bowling. We went bowling. We <laughs> lost. Oh no. We got So your bowling was just like probably how it would have gone, you think, for playing the event? It would have been going into the event unprepared for Golos somehow. Cause you were gonna play Simic Flash. Yeah. I think Simic Flash had the best uh matchup against that deck um it's kind of weak to mono red but mono red's kind of not good right now um so i would i would i would have considered playing simic flash with like wicked wolf and frilled mystic yeah. counters all of the relevant relevant spells while keeping them you know maintaining a good tempo against them to put pressure on so yeah so speaking of Golos, that is the boogeyman of the format. Moving into Hall- moving into the Halloween season, yeah. um, seems to be causing a lot of pain because people don't know how to deal with um, a land that's very hard to interact with. I've seen lots of posts about all of the um, land destruction that is available in standard, and yes, there are 
four land destruction cards with assassin's trophy as well so you can sure yep. sure if you want to play those bad cards assassin's trophy is not bad the other ones it's are not, not but great. it being a land destruction spell is its worst option so correct but you also give them that and they get to go grab a basic and if they have yep. two field of the dead you're giving them a zombie yeah, give, and yeah, at least land. one zombie yeah. at least one zombie if they have another field of the dead so um <clears throat> i I don't know how to beat that deck yet, but I've been playing the green black adventure deck, which that's really fun with, mm-hmm. um, I've been playing the one that has lucky clover so I can double all my triggers with the, um, the innkeeper. So whenever you cast a creature spell oh. that has, um, an adventure spell that has adventure, you draw a card. If you can get like three of that out, you can really, you can really get going. You can really get cranking. So you play murderous riders and love struck beast as your, good stuff in in the adventure colors Mm -hmm. um but i really like playing lucky clover with the adventure spell that has pay for your opponent discards two cards and then they discard four cards off of it gross and i've done that and then someone played a hydrate crisis for x equals 10 and then i made them discard four of the five cards they drew uh (laughs) because i was like i don't know how to compete with this so I figure, I guess if I just starve people of cards, it doesn't play that that card normally. I threw it in there because I don't have four murderous riders. I only have two. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't want to um, craft them yet, not knowing what the standard format's going to look like. Yeah. And with uh, rare and mythic rare wild cards being at a premium, and I don't want to spend a ton more money all the time just to make every deck in standard. I, you know, I, I would love to be able to spend $500 on arena, but I just don't have $500 spent on arena. Uh, right. Every yep. format that comes out, especially when you, the mana base isn't great right now. So you have to have all those. You mm-hmm. have to have the rare lands to accommodate the ones that we just lost. And, yep. and a lot of the decks that I'm seeing right now are all rares and mythics like Golos. Once it's, upon a time. Once upon a time. Well, I have those now because I do play that. I played that in Simic Flash when I upgraded Simic Flash. Okay. So I have that. and um, But I don't have four murderous riders. I threw in the Lucky Clover because I don't have some of the other cards that really do belong in the deck. But it's been working really well without having the actual full deck. But I, I, I want to test out the green-white um, adventure. adventure. because Adventure time. Yeah, that one looks... And from what I'm hearing is that one's a little better, the green white adventure, than the green black adventure. Yeah, you get um you get giant killer, which is good against um like beanstalk giant, mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. stuff like that in the late game. Um venerable lockstone. Yeah, that was one of the reasons is they were saying that you can make your creatures bigger and cast cast some bigger stuff for cheaper. Right. And then Flower Flourish is also a good a good splash. Grab some lands. Um yep. But or speaking, just over on your creatures too, but yeah. Yeah. So speaking of like like we said, Golos is the boogeyman on the format. This weekend was the Star City Games team open, and why don't you go ahead and tell us about how many Golos decks <laughs> in in the teams made the top? Yeah. So going on top four because top four is the pl- generally the playoff for. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it was top eight for this one, but most most are um, top four. Um, six out of the top eight decks in the standard portion were some variant of Golos. Yup. Six <laughs> of the eight, but there was a Fires of Invention deck and then a Simic Aggro deck. So it wasn't all of them, but this past weekend, I think that was just the deck that you wanted to be on. Yeah. Um, let's see. 13 out of the 28 decks from, uh, day two of this event were just Bant Golos. And then if you add the other two variants of Golos, you have at least 15. So that accommodates for 50%, over 50% of the, the metagame per day two was just a Golos deck. It's a good card. It is a good card. But if you were to <laughs> told, if you were to told me that ramp would have been tier one and standard day one, I would have laughed at you. Because it's usually a mono red or some sort of an aggro deck. And we were seeing red black aggro decks when we talked last week on the podcast as being very good. Yeah. That was like Legends. initial release weekend. Goodness. Right. Yeah. That was like without all the once upon a time and um, once upon adventure. a time. I love that card. That card is great. I love playing it on turn two after I play my second land before I play my first spell. It's right. great. <laughs> well, the. Um, Winning team had eight copies in their t- in their decks. 
Because wow. oh, once, so it wasn't even Team Unified. They could all share. Yeah, with, when you have three different formats, because it was Legacy, Standard, Modern. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, you can. It, it's not a, like a shared card pool. It's not Unified. Was it the Standard and the Modern decks were both using it? Or standard it? Modern, yeah. The so the Standard deck was obviously Bangolos. The Modern was Amulet Titan, which played four copies of Once Upon a Time. And oh. S- instead of it cut Summoner's Pact. Um, so you don't have to obviously pay your pay pack trigger. Yeah. Potentially lose. Correct. And then it was Team Redelver, but the only thing that's different about that deck from like six years ago is that they added two Ren and Six. Okay. Cause it can the point the whole point of Team Redelver was to it plays um Hooting Mandrill, Tarmogoyf, and Delver. Um so the whole point of that deck was and was to kind of like wasteland your opponent out, draw them low on resources Ugh. and just play like yeah, just big, bigger green creatures to kind of win mm-hmm. with a, but while establishing a tempo. Um, so with run and six, you can keep recurring wasteland and lock your opponent out of the game. Okay. And that seems to be what the theme of legacy is: just play, just jam run and six in every deck that you can, just to get wasteland back. Right. So. Um, but the I think the most interesting um. Golo stack out of this entire format was the Saltai version, played by Zach Allen, who is actually from Michigan and a local grinder, very good player. Um, he played Saltai Golos, mm-hmm. and he used Saltai for the Risen Reef Elemental Package. I mean, your deck full of lands, why not be able to draw them off the top of your deck, thin out your deck, also get more Field of Dead triggers. Also played Yarrick. Do you guys remember when we used to kill Risen Reef on site? Yep. I still do when I see it rarely, but it feels good to see that. It's like a throwback to a month ago. <laughs> I miss a month ago. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> less Golos. Less Golos. But what was the what was the deck that everyone was losing to then? I mean Simic was good. What were we losing to a month ago? How do I already did I black um, it out? I guess, I guess so. <laughs> no, it was um Bandscape Shift. Oh yeah, we were losing to that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, this played um Yarrick to double your field of the dead triggers because why not right Cause why not <laughs> yeah. it's great yep and they also played agent of treachery which also synergizes with Yarrick. Mm. take all my stuff take two things if you got Yarrick. it'll be all my stuff eventually <laughs> correct when they bounce it or something or it dies and something brings it back and yeah yeah Yarrick makes everything worse <laughs> it's which really good why, commander. Yeah, I was gonna say which is why I want to build it for commander. Yeah, really good. So you have that once upon a time, Beanstalk Giant and Kenrith the Return King are the most cards that were played at the open and overall in all of Eldraine competitive for the past weekend. Yeah. Um four copies of uh Golos I'm sorry, uh Once Upon a Time was played in uh, every Pretty much every green deck in standard, which just happens to be a Golos deck. Okay. Um, Kenrith was the splash for most of those decks. He's like a Was that sideboard that you're grabbing with Faye Wishes, or was it in there so that... Because what I've been reading is it's much more interesting to watch that deck play against the mirror when you can do other things than just grab Field of the Dead. Yeah, a lot of people would... Because it breaks the mirror wide open because it's kind of just cleans a stalemate, and um, Kenrith does everything because he's five colors, so... Right. So, um happy to see Kenrith. Yeah. Getting it, seeing some play. It I didn't know it costs 5 mana but has a bunch of abilities. I thought it might have just been a commander commander staple as a very good political commander or just right. do Grip everything hug. commander. Yeah, yep. Um but it looks like we might see some more of this in standard. Yeah, and l- slightly more availability than most buy box promos, but still doesn't seem like it's quite enough. It seems like it's being quite quite but played quite a bit do we want the non-foil version that comes from the deluxe collection or the foil now you can actually get the non-foil in the collector's boosters oh can you really yeah because i actually opened one up the other day and then i realized that oh that's exciting yeah because you can also get those brawl commanders in the collector's boosters too right you can get a corvold in that yes yeah you can. i know i know brian wants a corvold but he wants a japanese corvold yeah, and, and they, he's waiting for the reprint. They're expensive. <laughs> they're expensive right now. They're like they're like twelve dollars currently in English, and they're like almost four times that in Japanese. And I want to cry. Oh yeah, but available availability 
is an issue maybe right now, but at least it looks like we're getting our second small print run in mid to late November. That was confirmed. Yes. Yeah. We read, we breaking news. It was as of today. Um, someone from star city games had posted on Twitter that, um, fear not, um, their distributor had reached out saying that the next print run would come through soon. Yeah. The, if I forget his name, but the CEO of Hasbro had said in, in an interview or statement that, um, the shortage of Eldrain was due to distributors um, kind of holding on to their product. And so there wasn't as much readily available as there, there should be. I don't know if it's necessarily Wizards has under, had underestimated the popularity of the set or it's just distributors withholding product. Um, but there is a shortage at the, um, the game store level. Um, for sure, especially Brawl decks. There's um, also shortages at the big box level. Cause yeah, there. I mean, targets were out. Walmart were out. I yeah, I I went to both today looking for packs just because I wanted some. The collectors boosters that are hard to find. Yeah, that were. Um, what was their retail price? I think they. I think they were being sold for twenty five dollars. Right. I no. I think they were in like in big box store. <clears throat> I think they were like five dollars or something they were whatever really the, yeah they were the price of like whatever they sell regular packs the regular blister because, packs for yeah because the oh. skew number was like the same or something but they oh, were, i didn't realize that yeah they were the same price so people were like buying them up from walmart and posting them on like facebook groups and selling them on ebay oh, that's for really annoying you know 20 or 30 dollars whatever they retail for at sure local game stores sure well i don't know okay so when it comes to these brawl decks, I don't know if they did underprint or if they were trying to be conservative with this for a reason. Now, the professor did a video on this a few days okay. ago, and he talked about a lot of the reasons why he thinks this could be happening. But to be fair, when brawl was announced last year, was it last year? I built one brawl deck. It was an yeah, ad. it was with Dominaria. Because yeah, because Ixalan was still in. Ixalan was out and I had made a Admiral Beckett brass brawl deck and my yep. LGS had some events. So I went and I played at like two of them. The format did not take off at the time. It felt very much like tiny leaders. And looking back at my tweets at that time, I had posted like a survey, like, is this the new tiny leaders? And <laughs> overwhelmingly the answer was yes, this isn't going to take off because it yeah. felt very much like a, money grab for wizards it felt like they were like there's this new format go buy all these standard cards now and and then it was like the end of the story for a long time and we yeah, didn't think kinda, there was kind of died and then it just and then all of a sudden it came back and they said we're gonna put it on arena okay this makes sense now it made absolutely no sense a year ago when we heard about it that was my that was my opinion i was like what is this yeah and who wants to play standard commander now i want to play standard commander on arena Right. A lot. Like, I'll play it all the time. Because sure. Commander's the best format. In Andy's opinion. In my opinion. This humble podcaster's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like my, um, Commander. I have some modern decks. I, I play modern. I, I used to play standard in paper a ton. Um, now I like to play... I like to draft. So I still play standard. I just don't play constructed standard. Right. Cause I, but I do that on arena. <laughs> I do everything on arena. I do everything on arena. Um, they take my money there. They take my money in paper. They take my money in digital. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> take, take my money. They could take your cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I just, I think that maybe they only printed as much as they did because they didn't know if it was actually going to take off. Well, for sure. I under, and I understand that, but we have the a new printing with that and commander 19, um the second printing coming in mid to late november from the sounds of it yeah so, it sounds like mid to late november but yeah both those are getting reprinted i don't know if that commander 19 was necessarily underprinted or hard to find um we we were lucky that we were order able to order um through our distributor a, a second like printing so okay a second i'm sorry a second order of um commander 19 do you think that the brawl decks would have been worse if they had flipped the commander 19 commanders to be the ones that were in the brawl deck and the brawl decks to be the commanders for c19 because i personally like the commanders from the brawl decks way more than c19 like way more 
That's interesting. Like I mean, before, I don't I don't dislike the C nineteen commanders. Yeah. At let all. me let me okay, let me get your opinion slash answer on a question before I answer yours. Do you think sub question. <laughs> yeah. Subreddit. Do you think that the Commander nineteen commanders, just the box ones, not is an entire the face ones. We're not, not talking about the sub commanders. Not, yeah, not as a whole. Do you think they're better than the Commander eighteen or do you think Commander eighteen was better? Commander 18 was the tribal ones, right? No, they were the Planeswalkers. The multicolored Planeswalkers. Because this was the second... Oh, that was like Estrid and... Okay, yep. And Sahili. Okay, so that was last year. Yeah. No, I think this year's Commanders, C19 is better than C18. But I think Brawl is better than C19. I think the general consensus has been that C19 is better than C18. Mm-hmm. Um... And I think also the general consensus is that the Brawl Commanders, specifically Box Commanders. The Commander. Right. Are better than Commander 19. Right. And I think a lot of people, including myself, are buying the Brawl decks to play them a few times. You can play them at a Brawl event if your local game shop has an event. I'm lucky that I do have um, a game shop that has that now. Um, Obviously, it was the first week. They did not have anyone turn out for it, but it was the first week where they also were running both the first week of Throne of Eldraine draft. They had the first week where Commander was live with Throne of Eldraine cards, and they were also adding Brawl to that. So the first week, I completely get why it would not have gotten any traction there. But I think once Brawl takes off on Arena, people might actually start playing it in paper. But I'm still not convinced but I think it'll be very popular on Arena. I think it will be very popular on Arena. I, I'm not going to say that I'm skeptical for people to play it on paper, but I think it would be hard to get around to get behind a format, a commander format that rotates, because that's for a lot of people that's the the deciding beauty, factor, right? The beauty. Okay, yeah. Deciding factor of playing commander is because like my cards don't rotate. I can buy a deck for twenty dollars and upgrade it whenever I feel like it mm-hmm. or can afford it. With brawl, it's like you can't necessarily do that. I mean, you obviously you can over like a nine month period, but that stuff rotates. Right. I think if you play standard and you and you draft or you have a constructed standard deck or you have the budget that supports a, de- a format like that, you will probably play a few times. You, yeah. you may like it. If you don't like the mechanics and standard at the time, you're probably not going to like it. Exactly. But um, I have, I play a lot of draft. I buy a lot of sealed products. So I think once we draft at home, we do a lot of drafts. Once we open all that stuff, I'll have the stuff to make Brawl decks and won't really have to spend extra money on it. I should hopefully have the cards that I need to make it, especially because it's a lot of standard cards. So you're going to be playing some commons and uncommons to fit a theme as opposed to only a lot of rares and mythics like you do in commander. Right. Um, So I'm excited, but I do think that the brawl commanders are being purchased to be disassembled to make full commander decks. And I've seen a lot of that online. I want an Alila or I want a Corvold for my Lord Windgrace deck or to build an Alila deck, not to have for brawl i was gonna say i know corvold is trending i don't remember if it was one or two but it was like first it was top five for sure um trending commanders for edh rec or on edh rec site oh really yeah i mean um i was reading the article on on edh rec about the sustainability or popularity of eldrin commanders and they always go to the metric of is this going to hit 600 decks or more or 700 i do like that article they do that every set release yes and they said that corvold without a doubt is going to hit like the 700 plus mark well and that's only the ones that are actually posted online as well there's so many people that make it that are like i'm not going to post this on ed oh yeah yeah. or or, uh, post this on um architect or wherever they're gathering their information um, mtg goldfish or they're they're just they don't post it but the deck is made but i'm looking right now at the past week and um corvold the in the top five are corvold corvold alila sir gwen torbran and chulain so i built torbran because we play mono red october at our lgs so commander night is on monday and right now everybody plays a mono red deck so i built torbran really fun nice um but it looks like that plus the four brawl commanders are the top. 
Okay. Um, in the past month, Golos was number one, but then it's Alila and Corvold are number two and three. So, <laughs> oh, good old Golos just messing up other formats too. Playing Field of the Dead and Commander as well, but it doesn't feel as bad. <laughs> Uh, I play it. I played it in Lord Windgrace, and let me tell you, it feels so good when you scape shift into Field of the Dead, and then either <laughs> Splendid Reclamation or Sacrifice your World Shaper to bring back all those lands and get more tokens. Ugh, it's crazy. I think I had like fifty four power on board at one point. My punch is like ash scoop. <laughs> <laughs> now you're right. Now you have here that a lot of people are blaming the lack of availability on the brawl decks on the removal of MSRP. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I was reading on Twitter that some people sh- said that they should bring back the MSRP, um, which is what manufacturer suggested retail price. Sure. Um, and that had been set by Wizards and or distributors for a long time, uh, but Wizards have finally decided to do it with do away with that, um, justifying that because in some markets, it you know their their prices are just through the roof and they, some people can't afford it. So it's about availability for product for uh, those. But is it really gone though? Because when you look at the big box stores, certainly we all at least looked at their prices or heard about them. They still used a price point that was like the previous MSRP. Right. So even though it's gone, they're still using that. Yeah. So they, they still use local distributors like LGSs. Mm -hmm. Those MSRP, while not, you know, an actual thing by Wizards mm-hmm, anymore, mm-hmm. those distributors still set those prices or suggest those prices to these big box and even LGS. Sure. So, and obviously, everything's based on cost and just things like things profit like that nature. margin. Exactly. Um, their bottom line is that they're still suggesting that some of those brawl ducks are what nineteen ninety five. Um, I think they were twenty ninety nine. Right, I think that's what they were. They yeah, were so they, they were a weird price point too. Yeah, they, they were, were like, not nineteen ninety nine, which is what you would normally see. Yeah, like I was seeing some people at GameStop were saying it was like twenty two fifty eight or something, something <laughs> strange. Who came up with this? I don't know. It's all based on percentages, and it's, it's just so strange. So, um, you had a fun experience, and by fun I mean horrible experience with uh. With the the shortage of the brawl decks that you guys had, you had some folks coming in and pulling um a I would like to speak to your manager on you. They went they went Tell, full Karen. They went full Karen. Tell us the Dub. story. So one guy was one particular customer came in looking for the brawl decks and he called last week claims we I can't claim, you know, back that up for sure, saying that no matter what happens or availability they w- we would honor the 1995 oh MSRP price, and we go. We never really had an option to sell these at 1995 because we only were given two displays. So that's one, two, four of each deck. So 16 brawl decks total is what your game shop received. Yeah, that's not many. That is not many. We ordered 48. Okay, <laughs> but only got uh. 16 right that's a that's a third no that's 16 32 okay so maybe it was fi- like 50 whatever we were we we ordered way more and and did not get we both attempted mental math there yeah let it let it be known we got brian's finger was going and his eyes squinted and my always my eyes always squint i'm part asian leave me alone <laughs> But anyway, we only had certain displays, and we had we have um, um, a couple of each deck left. Like we have, I'm sorry, we only have one of each deck left. Okay. And the guy immediately, I said, I'm sorry, I can't honor that. We have these at the prices that we do. Sure. You know, because you sorry. guys have to make your profit margin as well, and they weren't we, skyrocketed prices either. No. But the they're higher like, than than what you would have gotten at a big box store. The guy immediately goes, "I just wish I've called so many stores and they told us to go to Time Travers. They have great prices and great selection." And he goes, um, "I just wish somebody would honor that price. I'd like to speak to your manager." Oh. So then, a uh, coworker had just been walking by and he goes, "You know what's the problem? What can I what can I do to help?" And he goes, "Yeah, um, I called last week and he, you know explains the story." And then he's like, "The 
my coworker immediately goes, I don't, I can't do anything. We, that's literally the last of our product. And obviously like we want to sell it, but like, we're not just going to give it away. Well, and it was the other thing to remember is it was never at the price he says it was at. You never had them at nineteen ninety whatever. Yeah, it was like that's practically our cost. So it's like, we do you want us to like lose money on this product just so we honor it at the quote unquote MSRP, you sure. know, like or what you said we would sell it at? And oh, it was just it was a very frustrating experience. And it's like the popularity of the set has just unfortunately brought out the worst in some circumstances and. You know, as an LGS employee, I can't apologize enough, but it's like we're also getting it in the back end, too, because we can't reorder it from our distributors until at least November. And that's frustrating because you guys just want to say, you're like, we want to give you the cards. We want to give you all we of literally this. Want you to, we <laughs> literally want to give you the sealed product so you can sell it back to us and we get singles so we have them available so everybody can play on our standard events. Right, right. And you're just, you're not getting what you need, which is causing yeah, a trickle down effect. It's, Everyone's it's upset. In the circle of life. That's the circle of life at an LGS. You buy a product, we buy it back from you so we can sell it to the consumer. Consumers, but if you don't get it initially yeah like we're literally tapped out of once upon a time there is no once upon a time there is zero upon a time in our store <laughs> zero it upon is a time. because it is played in every deck that plays green in standard and possibly modern so it is what it is but you'll get them soon we will get them soon hopefully well so how many boxes of throne of eldrain did you guys open for your for your case we typically, for singles, we typically open whatever prize we have left over from the pre-release that we didn't give away because we typically order more prize than what is generally um, suggested by your um, distributor. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, I don't know, maybe three boxes or whatever. And then we'll open up, we try and open up up to two cases. That usually gives you at least two play sets of each single, barring mythics. Um, so we opened that and then we went sold out of all of our single, most of our singles within the first, the weekend. Um, we were under allocated on our seal product as far as boxes and those sold out in less than 24 hours. Well, that seems like everything worked out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, we uh, obviously we got the, uh, <laughs> the effect that we wanted that we wanted to sell all of our product, but it's like now we don't have anything and then we get these, you know unfortunately bad customer experiences where you yeah. know they don't have product and we don't have a product to give them so right um so you have some stuff like you can do your drafts and stuff you have yeah we have packs, enough packs but right yeah i mean we have like the bundles that we can you know potentially open up if we really need packs to you know give out i haven't opened a bundle in a long time i miss opening bundles. until until you told me i didn't even realize that bundles were guaranteed two to two and a half mythics i had no idea that that was a thing when did that start it's always really been a thing they've never really explicitly said that but every time you open up a bundle at least every time i've opened up a bundle if i got at least two mythics but that's that's the frequency at which they does it have a higher drop rate in those what do you mean like are those packs specifically packed a certain way that there's two mythics inside of them or yeah it's different from box it's also you can also um uh pre-release kits are different because they're those are designed to have um higher drop rates as well um then i don't know the specific rates for like mythics and stuff but they're they're just kind of jamming um foil mythic rares into like you know x number of pre-release kits so i never really get those pre-release kits I wish right. I did. <laughs> you get like the you sit next to the person who gets the fire the foil extended art Oko, and you're like, <laughs> I just opened a Castle Vantress as my promo. <laughs> Mine's a whole six cents. Right, you got <laughs> whatever. It uh, is. Yeah, you got the 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 foil um, acclaimed. Uh, was it contender or content? Right, isn't that the name of the card? Is it? Oh, the the white card. Yeah, the one in two white. You get one of those, and then somebody opens up a foil ex or borderless Garrick, and you're like, "Oh, cool!" Oh man, I'm in one seat to the wrong side. I would have gotten yeah. that one if I had just sat. If I would have just flagged down this LGS employee sooner, I would have gotten that. <laughs> right. Um, another interesting thing <clears throat> that I saw that I wanted to talk about before we end is that um, there was someone that opened up 1,100 boxes of Throne of Eldraine. What? 1,100, and and they had um, some stats. 
on how often you saw some of the the cards drop like rares versus the showcase rares for oh, okay. and sure. the extended so um <clears throat> it said that um the most common mythic that they had opened was oko with 326 copies of it garrick they opened 308 um they said foil alt art mythic were extra in cases so there were several cases where they had four foil mythics including some like foil garrick or the foil alternate art garrick um they said the foil borderless royal scions of the 1100 boxes they opened they opened three of those and then really? they opened seven oko thief of crowns foil extended art we In- bought over i'm sorry i didn't interrupt no the, over the course of that we the pre-release weekend we bought i think three borderless foil royal scions from like pre-release kits i think or maybe just you know pre-release product that uh, they bought like our co-host um the the sub co-host mike Coyle, when you were out he opened one at his pre-release awesome and then we were drafting at my house this past weekend and i opened one what uh, yeah it was exciting not foil regular I still, wish I wish it was cool. foil, but it's still really cool. Yeah, I want to play that in Brawl just to have it because now I have one. I don't know if I'm going to play it in a standard deck, but that'd be a fun yeah. Brawl Commander. Would you play it in? Um... I think I play it as the Commander because you can play Planeswalkers as Commanders in Brawl. Oh, that's true. I was going to Commander, but would you play it in your uh, what's the Loki the, Sky? The split one that you the, I'm sorry, oh Zinder split Zinder split no Zinder split yeah. Would you play in that? Um sure i don't see any reason why not i guess right. filtering is nice to be able to to draw Loot, a card and yeah, discard a card sure. okay um and then it said that um back to the those stats the, the very last little bit so that um the regular alternates were so on average there were 626 uh rares the alternate art rares were 246 and then they got um one alternate for each two to five regular versions is what they saw. So the the alternate art that those were their their stats on that, and then on average they got 316 mythics. They said that they they had um, 43 alternate mythics, and then there was one alternate art for every seven to three of the regular mythic rares. So that's those were the stats. This was um, Thomas Vanek on Twitter. Um, it said that. Um, he is working as the price manager for a hobby store, Black Knight. Um, Cerny, I don't know how to pronounce this. Ritter, Cerny Ritter Hobby Store um, in the Czech Republic. So not, not here, but that's a lot of boxes to open. I would have loved to have opened 1,100 boxes just, just to do it. I love opening packs of cards. <laughs> I like opening packs, but then once you get That's to a lot of sorting. Yeah. Once you get to about the third box, you're like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Just mentally checked it. Like it, doing it all at once. That's a lot. So, yep. um, but I thought those were, those stats were interesting. And I wanted to share because I feel like I, I lucked out by getting one of those foil art, the Royal Scions in my, oh yeah, in yeah. my box that we bought. Um, anyway, I think next, that's it for today. Well, the next small little thing I want to oh, discuss. Was we have one more thing. Actually, breaking news as of like about four hours ago, um, according to Wizards Esport um, Twitter page, they're moving because they have a busy, I don't know the specific events coming up, but they, um, with a busy November, I'm assuming it has to do with, because there are a lot of Magic Fests in November, mm-hmm. they're moving up their ban and restricted update. Normally, it's what, uh, five weeks after set release? Mm-hmm. Um, they're moving it from November 18th up to October 21st. So that's in like, a week and a half (gasps) i wonder why i'm curious okay so does that mean okay so there could be a couple things could it be related to a standard banning that affects their brawl release on arena or could it just could it be it's got to be standard right or is it modern um is there something that's affecting modern right now no modern's actually in it it's pretty good producer ryan what card do they not have to worry about anymore Hogak. 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 Yeah, no, standard, or I'm sorry, modern is actually in a pretty good place right now. It's pretty diverse format. Matchups across the board are 50 50. Um, I th- if I had to guess, um, I would assume it was 
and this is kind of this is speculating yeah this is speculating this is kind of far out there um but we did just have a the biggest popper turnout in North America in RAW Hobbies to which um, the professor showed up to, yeah. um, which apparently from local sources, he went 4-0 and then dropped because he didn't want to get prized just because, you know, he's just there to support the event and stuff. Right. Kind of celebrity appearance, if you will. Um, local Michigan store. Right. RAW Hobbies. RAW Hobbies. One of the legendary shops in all of, you know, the United States. Um they had their biggest popper turnout in North America. And a lot of people are speculating that because of the unhappiness of the format with um, Arkham's Astrolabe and Ephemerate, Ephemerate. they might be um, correcting banning, that. Yeah. They might be banning at least Ephemerate. If not Arkham Astrolabe as well. Um, that's just my, you know, hot take. I mean, we saw a lot of people talking about it and they, they were disappointed. It didn't seem that people were mad unless you yeah. were really hardcore into anti. Yeah. In, more, I think it's more in people, popper. Right. I think people are more upset about ephemerate more than Arkham's Astrolabe um, because Arkham's Astrolabe does something in popper that it didn't have before. And that was correct mana issues. Right. Cause you could play two or three colors now with that card without a problem. And you're playing Snowlands now, so it's, it's... And everybody's playing Snowlands. Everybody's playing Snowlands. If anything, that affected the economy of Snowlands. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we did we did revitalize the economy of Snowlands with Modern Horizons. Uh, correct, yeah. Because had they printed Arkham's Astrolabe without Snowlands, Snowlands would be real expensive. Uh, correct, yeah. Um, I mean, some of those were $4 a piece. Like, the islands from on, uh, Cold Snap were, I think, like... 411 or something ridiculous yeah, um, before the reprint. So. That's expensive. Yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. We'll see. I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. But that's our, we'll circle back in a couple weeks to see if we were right. Yeah. Do we Calling think there's now. anything in standard that would be banned? I don't know if Golos is ban worthy. No. I just, I don't think it is. If anything, it would probably be Field of the Dead because that's the card that's least, def- would af- affect the least amount of decks. Couldn't you just restrict it? I would much rather see a restricted deck than a banned card. We yeah. just came out of the standard of last year that had more banned cards in standard than literally ever. Right. And we came up with the um, we. I'm not part of it at all. Are you French? <laughs> we, we. Um, Wizards created the playtest group specifically to try for and find... Standard, yeah. For standard, yeah. For standard, to find problems. Yep. And, I, and I think maybe... It might be a problem for a few months, but maybe another set will come out and it won't be a problem. I don't even know if a certain. I don't even know if it's a problem. I think we just saw a lot of it recently, and people were sad that they had to play against it when they got to play any card in the format. Yeah, I think it was just the easiest deck to build or play around week one, and now that people, okay, this is the best deck going forward. Like, let's start formulating a plan, and I think. You know, once people get the think tank going, then they'll be able to counteract it. Sure. Like I said, I think Simic Flash is a good competitor against that deck, but that's just my personal opinion and experience from, you know, MTGA. Is that what we're calling Arena now? MTGA? It's every time I read it, it's MTGA. Is it? I just call it Arena. I call it Mitga. <laughs> Mitga. Mitga. Well, that's the end of our podcast this week. Boo. I know. It's like my fifth boo. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Mental high five. Halloween's coming. <laughs> um, Halloween is coming. Thank you all for listening. You guys are the best. Uh, if you want to contact us, you can find our podcast on Twitter at Guardian Pod. And if you want to find me, you can find me at AT Flory. And you can find me at Baller Man Cometh. Also, take a look for hashtag Guardian Project Pod to find our posts and our episodes. We'd like to hear from you, so send along your comments and any topics that you want us to talk about, and we'll cover those on the next episode. Uh, you can also email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. Um, and like we said earlier, uh, look out for our new logo in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are not going anywhere. Um, don't lose us. Uh, you'll still get the reminder. It'll just look a little different. Um, and that's it. So we will see you in a week. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye now. See ya. Au revoir. Oui, oui. Adios. Sayonara. Didn't I say that one? No, you said adios. I didn't say that one. That's it. That's all she wrote. 
Come on, man. Uh, done with woods. Are there any more? Are there any more? What else can we say for that's it? That's all, folks. <laughs> Avita Zen. I'm thinking so hard right now and I can't think <laughs> anymore. <laughs>